said it should be abolished. Change my mind. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you think it should be abolished, though? Because oh, it's inefficient and stupid. He has a good. No, he has a reason. Do you want, tell them? Tell him the yeah. reason. It's a good. Look, reason. You, okay. First off, you know that all the Labor parties in all the states before Federation and decades after Federation as well, were trying to abolish Senates. Yeah, they tried to do that. All the legislative councils in all the different states. And in fact, they were, do, yeah, they, um, were, they, were, they, were, they were they were very close to doing it, um, but the high court overruled. Anyways, yeah, but you're right. There have been con- a lot of they efforts. They used to construct to suicide squads. They get people elected to legislative councils in states, mm. and then when those suicide squads went in there, they just went, hey, chairs are pretty comfy. Yeah. And then they wouldn't abolish themselves. But Jordan, you're, ones- you're thinking of like a Labour government being in control and being a majority in the parliament, so they're able to enact good legislation which will benefit Australia. Here's a flip version of it. There's a Liberal government which is going crazy, and it's like been uh, taken no, a hostage. What he wants to do is he wants to make... The, abolish the Senate so that the libs can go crazy here so that they fuck shit up so yeah, badly. Now we're talking. That's a yeah, little thank, I knew you'd be on That's board a little with this. Calming. Ali is on this train. <laughs> no, I'm not abolish on this train. Abolish the Senate. I am pro. I am pro. I am, pro, by no, I am not on that you train. You are on that too, train. You are on it. They've done it in Queensland. Why is Labor in power most of the time in a state that is thoroughly liberal? It's the most liberal state there is. And yet in a state level, it's a Labor government despite all the papers being against the Labor Party. I think it's also and like... like it, it, it takes a lot, a lot of- for them to vote in the LNP. And then when the LNP's in, it's in for one term, not three. I, okay, I am not like... You understand Australian policy a lot more than me. However... I think that there's a lot of people in this country that are not comfortable with having a Labour government at the federal level, but are comfortable in having Labour government at a state level. I don't think that's These true. are the same people that... Well, I, I again, like, I think it, that the a lot of people in Queensland vote for uh, Liberal, for the for Federal, and, and vote Labour for uh, State. And this is usually after Liberals yes, but having you know some time in government and fucking shit over. Here's another one. Eventually, Queensland's going to switch over and go to Liberal because... Yes, but it'll only be in yeah. for a term. Yeah. <clears throat> because, really? okay, look, they had the gerrymandering in the Joe Bioki peterson era but that was extremely corrupt and was basically the closest thing that australia's ever had to a dictatorship and as soon as they were able to smash that you know just pretty much just a red wash every every election and yes campbell newman absolutely obliterated the labor party in one election what happened to the election afterwards voted out Hmm. back to where it should be i am quite confident that a state labor government will get a third term in queensland Really? Despite the fact that in the last election, Murdoch bought every paper in Queensland. Wow, that's that's propaganda only works to a certain point. Watch, that completely defies everything that you've done for the last eight years. No, I, I always said that. I said that as soon as it gets to a point where there's like a depression or a world mm. war, oh, yeah, this yeah, is yeah. when the Labor Party usually wins office. It's these <laughs> extreme moments in history. And it was the same throughout uh, uh, the Hawke-Keating years. Because they had to completely retool the economy because inflation was just through the roof. Mm. Jesus. But at a certain point, business just goes, okay, we've we've eaten enough cake. We're getting sick. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> and I think that's what needs to happen for Labor to win. And that's why they win in Queensland all the time. And that's why I want you guys, especially throughout the next election until there is an election, can you shut the fuck up about Adani for, for Christ's sakes? Because Labor... Give them a break. Right. Well, Adani needs a break. No, no, no. Because Labor yeah. passed. Oh, the la- la- a, la- yeah. a, let Adani pass. What weird views I have. Abolish your Senate. Uh, build Adani tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Are you saying I've got to Ashama stop... Osama Bin right? Laden should build Adani. Bring him back <laughs> yeah, from the bring dead. Him back from Are you dead. saying I can uh, stop capture, spray painting? Uh, Everyone has to convert to Islam. Are you saying that I can stop spray painting every stop sign with Adani at the bottom <laughs> of it? Oh, that's yes. That's, uh, that's why holes stop, were and covered Stop in blaming that. Anastasia Palaszczuk for it. She reduced it by... Uh, uh, you know, made it a six of the original size. She didn't end up firing 20,000 firefighters, teachers and nurses to get the money to build Adani. She was obviously Pragmatic. opposed to it in a pragmatic Dude, way fuck for the last Adani, six years. Dude, fuck Adani, man. They're going to... F- 
They're not doing anything that's good for them. Like, they're, gonna, they're screwing up the Great Barrier Reef. They're extracting more coal. Yeah, we're getting a few dollars out of it. And I understand for, like, no, Queensland not, politics, really, it's, like, essential for survival. No, but I am not a politician in Queensland, and I can speak my mind. Fuck a Dani. Yeah, it's a bad thing. But this is, what I, this is what people don't understand about the tepid politics of Queensland. If Labor comes out and says, fuck a Dani, they lose every North Queensland seat overnight. Hmm. Yeah, because they see that. that as an attack on coal, right? But so if they come out and say that, yeah, and then people are going to say they gave them subsidies after six years and minimal subsidies. I feel like Labor is the, the LNP was willing to. The LNP gutted the state. You know what the first term of the Labor Party was? Just undoing all of the damage that the Liberals, that the LNP did to the pr- public sector. Mm. That was it. Just rebuilding frontline services. they have been decimated because of the LNP. Are but they that's what I like it? about them not having a Senate is that people are allowed to see the full extended yeah. brunt I get that. of the Liberals and Nationals. They're allowed to see what they're actually about. Mm. I, he has a point. But uh, but isn't like, isn't Gautam Adani like abandoning his, his like Australia project? Th- that's what I think as well. I think that the Adani project, which is what most people don't understand about it, it's just something that he keeps on his balance sheet so he can get funding and leverage for other projects that actually are profitable for him. But he just puts that there so he can say that he has this ghost asset. <laughs> yeah, the look, labor- Adani, the guy that it's named. Oh, right, 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 right. I, I guess what we could say, reverse evil Gonski. <laughs> mm. I, yeah, I, look, I understand for like really pragmatic reasons. And also the fact that like Labour's version of the Adani plan is significantly better than Liberal's version of the Adani. Dude, the Liberals basically wanted to spend public money to build the terminal for them. The entire thing. They want to lay out the entire infrastructure for them yes. with a guarantee that they'll buy some coal. Ali. Oh, my God. And Labor said, like, you've got to build we're willing yourself. to pay good. for it by firing 20,000 frontline workers throughout Queensland. That's, uh, that's, 20. I don't know. 20,000. Spending public money for extracting our resources is technically true, but the way the Liberal National Party will put it is that, first of all, we don't need that resource. Technically speaking, we don't need enough of it to generate our own electricity Mm. because our demand isn't that high. And also we have other avenues now. So it's kind of just like there. Mm. Secondly, they would argue that our entire purpose for doing this is to facilitate... um, Investment, foreign investment. Well, not just foreign investment, but like a company that will, will... Well, infrastructure, they're paying for themselves. They're saying just like a a stable uh, demand for our coal. Because if we build this infrastructure for them, that's their argument. I'll yeah. tell you what Labor also says. Their argument is if we build this like infrastructure for them, what this allows us is to sell our coal at a good price for a long ass time. Right. Okay. Because there's like need in India for it. Labor's argument was, the last I checked, that that's true and we want that. However, this deal is profitable enough for them to build it themselves. We don't have to facilitate this. No, no, no. It was they're not better than that. It was such a good challenge. This was the tightrope that Labor had to walk until there was a very concerted effort in the Murdoch press to push Anastasia Palaszczuk to the point where they were basically sending messages that if you don't pass a Dani, we will run you into the ground into the next state election. And she has both the Murdoch press owning all the papers in her state and Clive Palmer creating all of these Koch brothers-esque think tanks in Queensland. She has to make some deals, right? But her tightrope that she was walking for years was, if it's profitable enough, let private investment do it. Because if the demand is truly there, that will facilitate it itself. So we don't need to put government dollars into it. But that's it's because so much I, more sense. The, yeah. Like because there is another scenario which the LNP wouldn't tell is that we spend all of that money on build. But this isn't cheap shit. This is expensive stuff. We build all of that, and eventually we don't even have a stable demand for it. Where like uh, Adani for some reason goes bankrupt. There's a lot of speculation that Adani's uh, yeah. their own uh, uh, checks bankrupt, and balances. Right? Yeah. yeah, well not bankrupt, but like they're, they're they're hemorrhaging a lot of money. So technically they might not do it. Let's say some other company in India does it. But is there going to be enough demand? Because these are like decade projects. It's We're expecting if we do this that we like, dude, like if we do this, like, you want to do this, you want to buy our coal for like the next 10 years or something, at least. Mm. And they might sign a contract for it, and but India's maybe there isn't, a, it, there isn't demand. What if like, like, like our oil prices collapse so much that it yeah. becomes profitable for India to switch over to oil instead of buying coal from us? Yeah, so yeah, these yeah. Are yeah. There, so and the price of coal has been plummeting for a decade. It has been plummeting. Be like- so it's, I think it's extremely wise for any government to say, 
fine if you want to do this if you want to fuck over our yourself, natural reason yeah. you do it yourself and How if it's that if you don't want to do it then it's not like worth it it's a reasonable it. argument I, w- I would i would argue that it's reasonable for them to build themselves completely i mean look if i want to build a business i don't get a fucking government handout because you don't know how to apply for it, but you do. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, fine, but it's yeah, minuscule, like right? It's minuscule, right? Yeah, it is minuscule. I mean, but look, I suppose actually in the grand scheme of things, unless it's the LNP, well, this is the whole point. No, but the point is if you say- Pretty like, much Anastasia Palaszczuk, this is the difference. The LNP was saying, we'll build it for you and you can have all the profits. Anastasia Palaszczuk was basically saying, we'll give you as much as we give cunts on Centrelink to start a business. Yeah. In the grand scheme of things, the subsidies that they were giving would- Minuscule. So what? And then the other thing that I just need to point out for the next election for any Queensland listeners there, and I will be making more votes about this. But if you vote out Queensland Labor, you can say goodbye to any reef plan, which is insane. In twenty twenty two, this day, the LNP do not have a reef plan. No strategy for managing the Great Barrier Reef. You yeah. can say hello to them in, uh, scrapping all land clearing laws like they did under Campbell Newman, which will increase land clearing to levels that they have in New South Wales. In fact, it exceeded New South Wales. And New South Wales has some of the worst land clearing rates in the world. Queensland had worse land clearing rates. And if you put in those land clearing rates, the thing if you're going, you're going to kill the Great Barrier Reef with a darny, you're going to kill it a hell of a lot faster if you have all of that runoff coming from all of this cleared land into the Great Barrier Reef. That kills about 40 to 50% of the coral. On top of that, you can say goodbye to any... Uh, infrastructure plan that Queensland, uh, Queensland Labor had in place for 50% renewables by 2030, which is, we all know, as soon as these targets are in place, the Greens always come out and say, oh my God, but it's not 100%, it should be 100%. That's not the point. The point is there to put this target that attracts investment but doesn't scare off coal to run a huge campaign against you so that you get voted out because as soon as you have that 50 percent target it exceeds it by a mile this is why adelaide started out with a 50 percent target by 2030 and they're already at 100 percent pretty much uh, 2021 I th- i'll have to look into no it, they like, are they're like they're close to 100 they're close to 100 percent renewables really? yeah renewables that's, so they were 11 years that's, ahead that was their whole problem that's why like they're they they kept having blackouts and then elon musk had to install a battery yeah, yeah. because they 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 weren't producing it from normal power plants they were literally no 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 no. those blackouts were a result of the coal plant this is the propaganda that was sold around that it was yeah, you're it, was, it had that. nothing to do with renewables it was because the coal plants were failing because of heat waves due to climate change shutting down all of these 60 year old facilities Mm. so all of that's a lie anyway but queensland especially has some of the richest renewable resources on planet earth right it's the sunshine state yeah in fact there was this really good saying from this guy that is uh the i don't know i guess the forefather of germany's renewable policy so one of the biggest and most ambitious renewable policies on earth. He was complaining to Rudd's chief economist that the worst place to be producing renewable energy in Australia is, is better than the best place to be producing renewable energy in Germany. Yeah, that but makes sense. Queensland yeah. especially mm. has the best renewable resources in the country. Dude, all of so Australia obviously if has you have a, a lot target of potential. Huh? Mm. All Australia of Australia has absolutely. a lot of bloody potential. 500 times more than what we need. Mm. And we could be exporting all of that. We can be bringing back all of these in- really intensive industries, giving them free so, energy like uh, steel and aluminium. We're talking about trillions of dollars of investment. 